Hello everyone, myself Dr. Vinayak Dhulab, Head and Assistant Professor, Department of Environmental Science, School of Earth Sciences, Punyash Lok Ahilya Deo Hokar, Solapur University, Solapur, Maharashtra. I welcome you all in this international conference on sustainable development and environmental issue. First of all, I thanks to uh, organizers, organizing committee and the principal of both the colleges for giving me this opportunity in this conference. So, my topic is strategy for global water resources. As we know, this water is very important resource for the life and without water we, cannot, we can't uh, live or nobody can live without water. And for that I must congratulate the organizer for selecting this theme in this uh, conference. So this is the content of my presentation. So I will first of all cover the introductory part. In that introductory part, I will cover the little bit part about the sustainable development, environmental issues related, the environmental issues. And secondly, I will focus on sustainable development, the definition, need and this sustainable development goals. Afterwards, I will cover the global water strategy, aim, vision and the objectives. Then after I will cover the targets the targets for year 2030 later on i will focus on the global water overview the, st uh, the status of the global water and the uses of the global globally this water your uh, uses of the uh, water global level afterward i will focus on this india water status and the uses of the water later on we will focus the availability of water per capita at global level as well as in nation level, national level. Then after I will cover water resources in India and what are the crises in India, what are the solution and technology uh, uh, in India otherwise in uh, and also in the uh, abroad also or world level. So first of all we will see what exactly sustainable development. I think you must be uh, listen and I think most of the resource person they have talked on the uh, the sustainable development but in my point of view what exactly in the sustainable development if you see the the background of the sustainable development so this term was originated from the united nations stockholm conference and, and i think everybody known about this stockholm conference so which was held in 1972 and the theme was the human and environment and in that conference uh, the acquired the power to transform their environment in countless ways on unprecedented scale. So the that human and environment that refers in that era, that's why this conference was very popular and very famous for this sustainable development. Uh, one such a strategy which was dubbed and uh, sustainable development was mainstreamed through the publishing of our common future in 1987 and that conference is a very famous conference that is UN WCED that is United Nation World Commission on Environment and Development there also the human and environmental issues was discussed and they have planned for the future also then after this WCED when it was held that was largely held and because of the growing recognition of human impacts on the planet and the negative feedbacks of the environmental degradation on humans which were felt most ac acutely in the developing world so this is about what the sustainable then why sustainable development to whom sustainable development why it is necessary so this sustainable development which is required the active involvement of the stakeholders so who is the stakeholders we all are the stakeholders governments from the government ngos private sector civil societies all are the stakeholders of this sustainable development and we have to we are, as well as you have to remind policy makers to make decisions which protect your future you can remind them that want better jobs cleaner cities more equitable resources distribution and and all so a guarantee that you your future is secure full of opportunity pleasant world to live in a health planet so this is the main aim of this sustainable development afterwards when uh, sustainable development goal was fixed earlier it was seven goals later on it was in 19 uh, in uh, 2015 16 onwards they have uh, 
the uh, 17 goals they have fixed and accordingly the 17 goals they are uh, uh, working on that uh, themes so sustainable development goals are called for the action by all the countries and in this sustainable development all the countries they are involved in this sustainable development so the the in that countries uh, in that sustainable go goal the countries they may be poor rich or middle income to promote the prosperity which can protect the planet this recognizes that ending of the poverty must go hand in hand with strategies that build economic growth and address a range of the social needs education social needs that includes education health social protection and also the job opportunities so while tackling the climate change and the environmental protection so this is the main purpose need of this sustainable development means which can be uh, remove the, the problems from the nation so that was uh, very nicely uh, defined in the brutland conference in 1987 so what they define so in the sustainable development is a development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs means simply sustainable development is a development that meets the need of the present without compromising so whatever your need so without any compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs so means we we have to conserve the resources we have to protect our resources for the future generation for the future future or the future upcoming uh, uh, the future of the the generation so th for them we have to conserve the our resources so this was very nicely defined in the 1987s brutland conference uh, brutland uh, report so if you if you look at the goals of the sustainable development presently they have listed 17 goals and in this 17 goals they have covered all the the problems of all the nations they have covered in this and you have to solve the problem through these goals means you have to get one goal for uh, remove as well as the uh, the the remove or uh, remove the problem from that nations so likewise uh, similar uh, you can see the sustainable development goal so our conference is based on the water our conference is based on the sustainable development and the environmental issues if you look at the issues there are various types of the issues if you look at the environmental issues then it will comes under the environmental related issues but the, uh, in that environmental issues related the po pollution population and then biodiversity loss of biodiversity then uh, air pollution water pollution likewise all these are the coming under the environmental issues but if you focus on the water and its sanitation it will come in under the sustainable development number six goal so these goals which can transform our uh, transform our world so if you look at this you can see the the picture which can which which covers 17 goals and they have given the what exactly goal for what purpose so as per the conference i have selected the sustainable development six goal which is for clean and wa clean water and the sanitation as we know the day by day the population urbanization developmental agriculture developments even industrialization industrialization because of the over consumption because of the over use misuse the most of the resources most of the water resources water bodies they are contaminated which is not feasible for the drinking and because of that most of the health problem health issues overcome or uh, uh, upcoming in the uh, day by days so for that every nation has to focus on the clean water and sanitation as we know we have very little uh, amount of water and that water if it is in contaminated form we cannot use for the drinking purpose even for the other domestic activity purpose so for that you have to focus on the sustainable development six goal number six so that's why sustainable uh, united nations they have fixed the 17 goals and each uh, nation or every nation they have to focus they have to work on that and accordingly they have to plan for their nation for the sustainable development so if you see look at the global point of view so water strategy water is one of the most valuable resource to ensure the sustainability 
of the planet and those who inhibit it so i i think everybody knows what is the importance what is the problem what are the the uh, uses of the water so global point of view it is very uh, the, for the drinking it is very uh, uh, less amount of water is available and if we are not um, protecting that water that much water so the problem will be a major we are aware about its critical importance for life and for almost all the human activities and at the same time aware of its fragility and the shortage this concern which has already been addressed in our commitment with sustainable development generates now due to its importance the global water management strategy that is gwm strategy they, in that strategy they have mentioned what are the uh, the strategies under this water water or water resources so this is the global view of this water strategy uh, this is very nice example given by the Ken Ken kennedy so i think everybody uh, look at this picture and they uh, they have to understood what exactly that picture showing to us so one person can make a difference i think everybody knows i can change the world you have the ability you can do that you will do that you can do that you will change the world how your involvement your involvement should be in this activity if you if you are involving in this uh, uh marathon or in this particular activity means you will change the world you can change the mindset of the people mindset of the nation mindset of the state or even home also so for that youth is very important children are very important because they are the messenger they are changers of the world they are changers of the nations they are changers of the mindsets of the pro uh, the the mindsets uh, they can change the mindsets of the the people uh, or they can aware the people uh, around uh, surrounding areas that's why they, he has given a very nice picture i can change the world so will you that yes youth are the most important actors because you youth having a, a very strong power they can change the they can change anything if you involve in this particular uh, problem sustainable development they will they will change the nation even though they can change the uh, the local to global level so you have to involve the youth in this uh, particular uh, uh, this star uh, yeah, activity so yes it is about our future and our future in the our future is in the youth our future is our youth so youth whatever youth can do so of, of course we can get the from that uh, the their work as well as their activities so in this overall uh, the sustainable development the youth are very important in the water conservation water uh, awareness as well as in the uh, sustainable development so after that the strategy for global water resources what are the strategies as per the topic so topic is we are uh, just coming on this topic that is strategy for the global water resource the global water resource strategy that visualizes a water secure world this is very important and i think uh, everybody uh, agree with this visualizes a water secure world world should be the water secured if it is not secured means we can face the problem where people and nation have the water they need to the healthy prosperous and resilient resilient so all three are very important that should be the need to the healthy prosperous and resilient means we have to conserve we have to secure our water resources for our world where the people and the nation have the water and they need to the healthy as well as the prosperous and the resilient okay and uh, i think everybody known and agree about this elixir of the life is the water and the most important nutrient for the human body without water i can, i have already told that without water and everybody knows about it this is you can refer everywhere so without water we cannot live nobody can or any without uh, water no life will not survive uh, after the water means after the oxygen the next is the uh, after the oxygen is the water means next to the oxygen is the human body needs the water for their uh, survival in order to the survive 
water is a crucial for the advancing human right reducing poverty and inequality and enabling the peace justice and system all are very very important uh, for this uh, uh, in this present days water is crucial for advancing human rights reducing poverty i think everybody knows uh, we have seen the, uh, two major wars afterwards everybody is saying and one of the um, fellow he has uh, given a statement the next war uh, will be on water and i think world agreed for this statement so next war may be on resources and i think everybody we all known our boundaries problems of the boundaries on what particularly uh, particular basis so most of the for the resources and in that resource forest and water the main resources are there so for the fighting uh, for this uh, resources most of the boundaries or most of the the state as well as countries they are fighting uh, on this uh, for this particular resources this reducing the poverty as we know if we have the water you will redu reduce the poverty and we have the uh, what do you say that um, uh, we have uh, historically if you see the uh, the the settlement of the any area or settlement of the any city it is in and around the water bodies means you can understood what exactly the importance of this water means if you if you have water means your area will be the developed if you don't have the water resources means you will be underdeveloped or maybe in the developing stage so uh, if you have the um, uh, water you will you you are the richer you are rich and inequality and inability peace justice and system similarly these are all points are very important therefore sustainable development six which can provides unique opportunity to the accelerate progress on the 2030 agenda as i said in earlier slide that is sustainable development six goal which can provide opportunity to accelerate progress on the 230 agenda so what exactly in that so whatever your future it is in that sustainable development goals and in that particular six is for water and that water should be the uh, safe and secure in form if it is not in that form means your uh, future will be the a major problematic so water is the core of sustainable development that's why it is given a very well a very very uh, important value in this sustainable development the core of sustainable development critically for socio-economic development healthy environment and the and for the development of the agriculture sustainable development agriculture system uh, afterwards we can uh, look at the global water strategy what strategy they have given what is the aim and vision and the objectives in the global water strategy to reduce the diseases and save the lives eradicate poverty promote the sustainable economic growth economic growth increases food energy security build peace and security and open up international markets so aim is to reduce the diseases and save the lives eradicate poverty i think everybody agree with this this is a very a nice statement has given by this you said and ussp uh, in, in their plan what is the aim to reduce the diseases and save lives eradicate poverty you have to remove the poverty you have to reduce the diseases save the lives and promote the sustainable economic growth whatever the growth is there that should be economical that should be the sustainable economic growth that on that particular point you have to focus also also you have to increase the food and energy security build peace and security and open the uh, open up the international market so that you will become a great uh, country you will become a rich in uh, rich in category and for that vision should be vision is water secure world where the people have sustainable supplies of water of sufficient quantity and quality of meat human economic and ecosystem needs while managing risk from the floods and the droughts and the global water strategy the objectives they have given that is promote sustainable access to safe drinking water and sanitation services this is a very important problem in overall world if you look at the picture in the next slide you will identify you will observe that what is the situation so you know, most of the water resources they are not safe in form the most of the 
problems due to the sanitation uh, services and the adoption of the key hygienic behavior so encourage secondly encourage the sound management and protection of the fresh water resources means you have to increase sound management and protection of the fresh water resources whatever the resources you have that you have to protect it and encourage for the sound management how you will uh, manage means how you will increase the uh, the capacity how you will protect the contamination from the contamination that you have to focus and third is strengthen the strengthen water quality water sector governance financing and the institution means you have to strengthen the uh, the water sector governance means they have to uh, set uh, they have to their set the uh, policies rules for the uh, secure purpose they can uh, uh, provide the financing for the protection as well as for the uh, for treatment likewise and you have to involve institutions for the research on the water sector so these are the very important objectives objectives given by the uh, the global water research strategies action plan report the new global warm uh, uh, global water uh, the um, global water uh, participants their strategy focuses on three main areas so in that the first is water solutions for the sustainable development goals climate resilient development and third is the transboundary water cooperation so in that economic growth population growth and climate disaster these are the important and creating water crisis in many places there is too much too little or too dirty water so they there you have to uh, focus on this particular aspect poverty pollution conflicts flood droughts migration all this is water related and often life threatening problem so we need to manage water better and share it carefully so these are the global water partnership strategy focuses on the uh, important aspect and in that they have given the three important uh, areas okay so if you look at this picture you will find out the availability and sustainable management of water at uh, you can find out uh, you, you will you can see here this is what the global level and this is for Indian level. So in this what exactly they have pictured uh, they uh, in the sustainable development six goal which is for clean water and sanitation. So it ensures availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation. 2.6 billion people have gained access to improved drinking water sources since 1990 and 666 million people are still without water look at the picture and that's why the united nation they have focused and that's why they have given the sustainable development six goal they have set this goal for the water and water and water resources if you look at the situation in india nearly 18 percent of the world's population but only 4% of the average global runoff in rivers. Nearly 500 million people are affected by drought in India. Over 20% of the people pop population lives in states which are not yet declared open declaration free, open defecation free. Means now there are some policies, there are some uh, 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 the schemes are uh, coming like Swachhata Abhiyan, Gram Swachhata Abhiyan, national, uh, 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 there are some national schemes are there. So through this, the uh, sanitation free or we can say the, the, this type of the problems are overcome through this scheme like uh, uh, Swachhata Abhiyan, like smart cities, likewise. Due to uh, one fifth child death, due to the severe diarrhea are in india one fifth of child deaths they are uh, observed in india uh, near about every year or each year nearly one lakh two thousand eighteen hundred eighteen hundred thirteen children die due to the severe diarrhea so this is a major case a major problem in india due to the contaminated water due to the uh, the water pollution 
and when that contaminated or polluted water consumed by uh, the people so mostly it, it is affected on the children as well as the uh, old age group of the uh, old age groups okay so of course in this particular uh, problem climate change is also contributing climate change is also affecting on the resources so how it is so the, uh, the it affects on the availability whatever the resources are there they are uh, affected on the affected due to this climate change it also affecting on the quality and quantity of the water this is uh, due to the basic human needs and threatening the effect effective enjoyment of the human rights to water and sanitation for potentially billions of the people the 2020 uh, united nation uh, water report world water report uh, they focuses on challenges opportunities and potential which are responses to the climate change in terms of adaptation mitigation and improve the resilience that can address through the improving water management this is a very important report which is related to the climate change and the adaptation and mitigation of the water resources what are the targets uh, in 2030 so these are the list of the ta targets you can refer from this uh, yeah, sustainable development code but uh, here the importance is the achieve the universal and equitable as access to the safe and affordable drinking water for all this is very important uh, target means you have to achieve your universal and equitable access that water should be universally and equitably accessed to the uh, the uh, the stakeholders and that should be in safe and affordable form as we know the the cost of the water one liter of uh, the packed water is uh, near about 20 to 25 rupees so that should not be like that that should be the uh, that should be the affordable to the common man layman and that should be the uh, safe and uh, non contaminated water so that is the main achievement th that is the main target secondly improve the water quality by reducing pollution so you have to improve your quality of the resources through reduction of the pollution eliminate the dumping and minimizing the releases of the hazard most of the cities as well as some industries they are discharging their effluents or the, they are disposing their waste into the water bodies near to the water bodies and it contaminates the the water uh, resources so that should not be happen in that particular area so that for that particular you have to work on that that is our second target third is sustainability increases water use efficiency across the sector and ensures sustainable withdrawals and supply of fresh water at risk water scarcity and sustainability reduces the number of people suffering from water scarcity so that should not be uh, happen so that's why you have to focus on this number three target fourth is implement integrated water resources so you have to implement integrated water resource management so similarly uh, which can include the uh, trans boundaries cooperation as appropriate so uh, that will helps to the agriculture uh, point of view and even for the groundwater uh, recharging and the next last is the protect and restore the water related ecosystem including mountains forest wetland rivers aquifers and the lakes so similarly you have to protect the other ecosystems other areas which are very important for the ground water recharging as well as water and soil conservation their role in the soil and water conservation that you have to protect so these are the main important targets of our uh, through this sustainable development goal up to the 2030 if you look at the global water water overview as i think everybody known about we have the 67 percent of coverage of the uh, earth by water and most of them is near about 97 percent of water is in the form of the saline water or marine water which is not useful but now the scientists or the researcher they are working on that water also they are converted into the fresh water they are converted fresh to the usable for drinking as well as for the industrial purposes near about 2.7 percent is water that is in the form of fresh water but out of that uh, two percent near nearly two percent is in the form of the ice and the 0 0.9 0 0.8 to 0.9 percent of water is in the form of the fresh water which we are consuming from uh, the uh, from in the form of lake water warm, river water dam water even though ground water so that much water uh, we have to secure we have to protect we have to uh, not polluted from other 
pollutants. So that we have to do in our uh, resources for the our, uh, for conservation of our resources. So this is the picture which we have just explained. Salt water is ninety point ninety seven point five percent means that this uh, uh, this much is the uh, cubic uh, uh, kilometer uh, cubic kilometers. The fresh water is two point five percent. Salt water is ninety seven point five percent, and the rest of uh, one percent is in the form of the point three is the lakes, groundwaters, and glaciers, etc. So these are very important. Uh, the points under this global water status or status of the global water if you look at the water store uh, storage or uh, stored in the water cycle reservoir of course you will find 97.25 percent is a uh, percent of water occupied by the water ocean oceanic um, in the form of oceanic water second 2.5 percent is in the form of ice caps and the rest of the uh, water which is in the form of one percent near nearly 0.8 to 0.9 percent is in the form of ground, lake water, soil moisture, atmosphere, streams, and biosphere. So this is the uh, volume of, volume of water stored in the uh, water cycle, global water cycle. This is the this picture. Uh, you will uh, uh, you can see this availability of water means how much precipitate uh, or rainfall is. Uh, for, uh, the total rainfall is about 4000 billion cubic meter and out of that so total availability of water is 1869 billion cubic meter and we can utilize the water about 1123 billion cubic meter out of that utilization we are using 6, 690 billion cubic meter for the surface in, which is in the form of lake river likewise and 433 billion cubic meter water is in the form of groundwater in the form of the well as well as in the form of um, uh, bore well as well as wells. So this is uh, from the source of the Minister of Water Resources, Government of India. Likewise, availability of water. If you see the availability, the country wise, so India is at the here. You can see the. Here is India, India and Pakistan. Okay, so why we are at the second last? Because our population means our demand is more, our consumption is more. That's why we are at the last, and we have the very uh, less resources, but dependents are more. That's why we are at the uh, last, second last. And if you look at the first is the Brazil, their population is very low or very less and their research, their resources are more and more so they are on the first second is australia third is usa so similarly uh, if you see one by one country wise we are at the the second last and our uh, the uh, the per capita per year uh, the requirement or availability of water in india is about uh, not more than 5000 cubic meter per capita per year so this is uh, the report of Minister of Water Resources. Second, uh, this particular graph which can show, which shows the per capita availability of water. And if you see the year wise, in 2025 and 2001, uh, uh, per capita water is about 200. But in future, it will be reduced. As I think everybody knows and agree because population is continuously rising, continuously increasing, and because because of that, most uh, the urbanization, even though major activities, and due to these activities, water become uh, because of this activity, water resources are in less form, in uh, less quantity, and which is also in not uh, direct to usable form, and uh, the demand uh, demands are more, so demands are more. The supply is less, so it will not balanced, and uh, you will see in this particular graph. So the per capita per day per year, the in future the demand and supply will not be matched, and the population will rise and demands will be also rise, and we will not provide their requirements. So of course the reduction in the per capita per day means 
similarly we are facing the problem of supply of water uh, uh, last 10 to 15 years back we are continuously uh, getting water but today we are getting the water two two days after three days after likewise so why this is happening because demand is increased and resources are very less in form or quantity that's why this this is not balanced if you look at the third graph and that graph shows the monsoon pattern or temporal a temporal variation in the rainfall uh, we don't have the continuous rainfall and sometimes it is high rainfall sometimes it is no rainfall sometimes it is medium or less rainfall so particularly june july august in that in the in in those months most of the uh, states or the areas they having rain but in that particular area only the water resources availability of water resources but later and uh, in the rest of the other months the there is no any availability of water means the demand is where and supply is where so this is that picture also uh, explains very nice uh, the picture of the nation as well as the global level this is this is about the uses of water major uses of water in percentage wise the agriculture which uses 17 70% domestic 8% and 22% of industries this is the percentage of total water used this graph shows this is uh, the case of india and which is getting from the the uh, water resource institute uh, from rurki so uh, in this uh, annual water requirements for different uses in kilometer cubic kilometers so first green zone which is related to the surface water second is related to ground water and third is the total water uses so you will find in detail uh, year wise in year 2010 and to year 2025 and year 2050 what will be the uh, the requirements what will be the change low to high high to low similar like that and if you take the example in 1997 to 98 it is 399 but in 2010 it is increased similarly in 2025 it is again increased and then year 2050 it is again increased means day by day increases the population urbanization agriculture requirements and because of that the water consumption is more the requirement is more understood so this is the main problem of this uh, the supply and demand this is the annual water requirements for different uses in kilometer cubic kilometer this is again the indian case study water use change changing the trends of the future how it changes the because we know the irrigation sector is the main consumer of the water and they require the maximum water if you percentage was senior if you see the percentage was senior for agriculture percentage 83 percent likely in senior in for 2050 it will be reduced because why it will be reduced there may be change in the agriculture pattern but industry domestic and other things they will increase their consumption will be more in 2050 if you look at the industry it is five percent if you look at the industry it is five percent and in 2020 uh, 2050 it is nine percent in domestic five percent and uh, in 2050 it is seven percent miss it is again increased because in this uh, in future population will increase agriculture will not be more maybe as per the nih report india so they have mentioned that other activity will also uh, the increases and because of that increases of other activities their demands of the uh, water will be the increases that's why the percentage of water in 2050 will be increases it is about 16 percent and in present scenario it is seven percent so you can understood what exactly will be the in 2050 2020 uh, 2030 or 2050 so Indian water resources already we have discussed and about 4% of world's contribution uh, contribution in the uh, contribution about 4% of world's fresh water is in India making India in top 10 water rich country in world but according to working group 2 report 
climate change india is designated as a water stressed region because we have resources but these resources not as per the, the standard as per the requirement as per the the usable form most of the resources they are in contamination form which is not useful for the drinking as well as for the other activity that's why they have termed as the water scare region if this scenario continues time time is no for india will be the term as a water scare region and this is the main problem of the indian water resources and we have the resources in two forms one is precipitation form and secondly we are getting through surface and ground water resources i will not be explain about what exactly in the precipitation so we are receiving near about 4000 cubic kilometer fresh water to india which is in the form of rain and snowfall in which 2047 2047 cubic kilometer return to the ocean evaporation and then it is precipitated a small percentage is stored in inland water bodies and groundwater aquifers rest of the water is goes to the or meets to the river river to ocean so this is the the precipitation or rainfall second from surface and groundwater resources uh, from this uh, india receives more water uh, rivers lakes groundwater aquifers so rivers as we know we have 12 major river systems north india south india central india and all these are the rivers they are major rivers of the nation india if you look at the their contribution so the maximum contribution is the ganga brahmaputra and brahmaputra so they contributes about 47 percent godavari contributes 11 percent krishna contributes 8 percent similarly other some rivers they are contributing 24 percent so their contribution is a major in this particular uh, river uh, river resource second lakes apart from the rivers india is housed to some of the most beautiful lakes uh, of the world some natural and other officials so they are there um, apart from the rivers india is the house to some of the most beautiful lakes of the world and as we know the lakes are the major uh, in problematic form because uh, the national lake conservation program and state lake conservation program of ministry of environment for forest they have mentioned that most of the lake water body they are in the unusable form because of the contamination and lakes serve as a source of water for the drinking they have said that they are use, uh, useful for the agriculture and even for the industries also but this is not uh, we, uh, we can say uh, we cannot say directly they can we can use directly for the uh, uses for these activities but uh, these are the major resources uh, resources uh, this is major resource for the this all these activities but the situation is different and third is groundwater where the most of the agriculture industries they are depending on this resource but about 80% of irrigation and 90% of drinking water comes from the groundwater and it is contributing more than 85% of the drinking water requirements. About 58% of irrigation requirements and more than 50% of urban and industrial water supplies. There are about 20 million users of the groundwater in the country. So this is the this is about groundwater aquifer. So what are the groundwater or water crises in India? As per the Niti Aayog, uh, Composite Water Management Index they have reported they have reported the flags of the few facts like six what they have facts finded uh, uh, given so the facts are 600 million people face the high to extreme water stress this is a major problem of the india 70 for 75 percent of the household do not have the drinking water this is the second crisis or second uh, the fact in india 84 percent do not have the piped water access 70 percent 70 percent of our water is contaminated so this is given in the niti Aayog's composite water management index and on this uh, basis uh, we have to work and that's why this sustainable development goal is working for this particular resource you can see the picture of the india uh, 54 percent of india faces high to extremely high water stresses so that may be in the form of the scarcity of water contamination of water water pollution likewise so this is the high to extremely high water stress so this is the situation what is the reason behind this scarcity of water the very important the due to excess population growth and because of this excess population growth 
it is imbalanced the supply and demand is imbalanced and uh, whatever the resources are there they are in the contamination form and also the mismanagement of the water resources so if we solve this problem so definitely you will get the uh, the the good water and pure water similarly inefficient use of water for agriculture a reduction in the traditional water recharges sewage and wastewater drainage traditional water bodies because of this most of the water contaminated and release of the chemicals and effluents from the industry they are also contaminating uh, the resources lack of the on time desilting operation in the large water bodies lack of efficient water management and the distribution water between urban consumers and the agriculture sector and industry all these are the points or all these are the reasons of this water scarcity in india india so this is the main problem and what are the solution and techniques for this uh, water stress or water issues or water crisis so if you apply this technique and this is globally acceptable globally uh, using this uh, solutions and techniques for the uh, water problem drip irrigation for agriculture growing crops even in the desert you have to apply the drip irrigation means you can manage you can management about, about, about this water management you can manage the water and second thing wastewater recycling means you have to re recycle the wastewater for agriculture the case is from israel you can take the example from the israel 80% of sewage they are using for the agriculture third is extracting water from the air this is again a very important case study from the israel company that is water generation limited they have extracting water from the air so this is also third most important technique desalination and we have the 97% globally if you look at the 97% of water in the form of salt water that you have to desaline and then you have to use it and the fourth fifth very important fog catcher so you have to catch the fog and convert it into the water so that is peru just two minute it is an innovation which tra traps water draws from the fog so this is the very important uh, techniques you have to apply it and you can uh, recover the water from the this what needs to be done so we have to uh, these points through these points we have to uh, overcome our problems and we have to do these things so recognize the right to water for life graded pricing system for the domestic water supply proposes comprehensive governance structures national water quality and footprint standards apply this apply for this rejuvenation of river systems like uh, 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 viral uh, uh, a viral dhara continuous flow and nirmal dhara unpolluted and swachh kinara clean river banks so likewise if you, if you apply this the river system will be regenerate prosperous plan proposes baseline development of rivers and establishing of river basin authorities for each interstate river basins like ganga action plan namami bhachandra bhaga namami ganga likewise yamuna action plan likewise ganga action plan so similar type of the authorities you have to establish and conserve the resources so the last point the conclusion of my overall uh, presentation the government has come up with world bank aided schemes and with community precipitation participation to ensure sustainable groundwater management in over exploited and groundwater stressed areas their needs to have multidisciplinary approach involving various scientists and ecologists to transfer various water management techniques we need to connect with nature nature to help rehabilitation rebalance the water cycle in sustainable and cost effective way by planting new forests reconnecting rivers to flood plains and restoring wetlands governments communities the private sectors and researchers must be collaborate conscious efforts need to be made at the household level and by communities institution and local bodies sustain measures should be taken to prevent the pollution of water bodies contaminated ground water reduce recycle and reuse uh, practice must be watchword and apply if have to hand over the live will planet to the future generation so all these are very important aspects of the uh, the global water strategy if you apply this you will get the the usable form of your resources and you will solve the problem of your area nation as well as the global also so with this 
thank you so much i once again uh, thanks to all of you and uh, the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity if you have any questions you can uh, write a questions to and even though you can mail me the question i can give some answers of this uh, answers of your questions thank you thank you very much thank you